Today, we'll continue to explore Vinitsa. It was the capital city in the time of the Ukrainian Revolution, 1917 to 1921, and the most modern cycling city in Ukraine. Are you ready? Let's go. We are here in Vinitsa at the Museum of Automotive, Bicycle, Photo and Radio Equipment. Yes, this collection of vintage cars and other equipment is that of local collector Alexei Strembitsky. So let's go and meet the collector himself. Yeah. But let me park up first. There we go and get out. Yeah. Alexei began to collect rare items back in 1977. This retro hobby began with just over 10 exhibits. Gradually, the owner of the Future Museum started not only collecting interesting things, but also buying them. So in 1979, he purchased the first retro car, Gaz 67. In just 35 years, it turned from an ordinary amateur hobby into a professional work of his entire life. Hello. Good afternoon. Dobry day. Dobry day. <laughs> You've got a great collection here. So how did you get into collecting? How did it all start? My collection is wonderful. But I would call myself more of a restorer than a collector. First, let's decide with the name. Its name is Automoto Velo Photo Teleradio Museum. For two reasons. The first is that once there was a so-called handyman. He was an automoto velophoto teleradio fixer, a person who could repair everything. Secondly, everything listed on this long name can actually be found here. Cars, motorcycles, bicycles, photo, TV and radio equipment, and so much more. About 2,000 exhibits are now part of our collection. So you've repaired everything that we see in here today? Everything here was mine once. A visitor can turn on any device and all of them can be used. There are TVs, for example, and you can actually turn them on and watch them. All the recorders and radios and so on. Everything is functional till today. Well, could you please give us a tour of all your lovely objects? Let's start here. On the left is my workplace. What was the idea behind the museum? To give the opportunity to literally feel the history through these vintage devices. Because when you just look with your eyes, you don't feel the warmth of an object. And when you touch, you can literally touch it, feel it, turn it on and reminisce the way it was done before. There is a special aura in things that are 50 to 60 years old. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Hands-on history is far better than just standing behind a screen and looking through. Yeah. So yeah, no, I, I, I like that. I like, I like yeah. how you work. I'll show you how a vinyl player works. You see, it's still working. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's Frank Sinatra down there. Maybe. Sinatra. I don't know. What's it? Oh, yeah, it's Sinatra. I nailed that. I nailed that. <laughs> Do you like Frank Sinatra? Is he one of your favourites? This is my favourite kind of Oh, yeah, of that's music. a yes. Quick question. What was the first thing that you ever repaired or restored? The first thing I repaired was a Gaz 67, an exact replica of the American Ford TT. When I came back from the army, I was already a grown-up, so I bought this car for 300 rubles and repaired it myself. This was my first collector's item. I started riding it and people started approaching me like, Oh, I see you have an old car. I have an old radio. I have something lying in the attic. Well, I decided not to refuse. Took one piece after another and one by one, gradually, 40 years later, I've got quite a collection. So this is a gramophone. I don't think I've ever seen one in the flesh before, so yes. It looks like a big tulip, I've just realised, like a flower. Yep, yeah, shall we continue on? Please, come in. The clock collection. Ah, uh, yes. So let's have a look at your uh, clock collection because you've said that everything that you that's in here works, but all these clocks are different at different times. 
because that's my job too. I have never been a watchmaker, but I became one. You know how it happens, just a paradox. Why do they show different time? I just don't have enough time to come and wind every single one of them. On the large ones, the time is the same. But these are just standing here, because I wanted to keep their longevity a little longer. Each winding damages both the spring and the mechanism. I like it. It's, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful collection. Wow, so you have a big collection of everything. So why collect clothes? You've got cars, you've got radios, but fashion, tell us why. I'll tell you, yes, it's safe to say that this is no longer a collection. It is an attribute of the museum. Because having a collection of old cars, motorcycles, you need to have some uniform and clothing for them. A visitor wants to imagine how it was back then. Maybe wear a uniform. Someone dreamed of becoming a general but did not. Here, he or she puts on the uniform of a general and walks like he has one. He may stand near Volga, another Soviet man's dream. And that's why this is not a collection anymore. These are just some attributes that can be tried on, photographed, just to complement your image, so to speak. To truly immerse yourself in that era. Well, that's why it's here. Oh, well, so you're making your dream come true. I mean, what is this one? This is a police hat. The modern police predecessor was the State Traffic Inspectorate. And this is the uniform of Ukrainian State Car Inspection. That is, that's amazing. This is a, a, a genuine like dream factory. It's really nice because obviously you have a history in the military. You have the first thing you repaired was like a car. You love music. Your grandmother's clock is like around the corner. It's like, yeah, it's a very special place and I can feel that from you and all the things that were. And the fact that you're letting us touch everything is, is amazing. So thank you. That's the way you play. One, two, three, four, together. Off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. There you go. I can do that. I put the sticks and pick up my guitar. I can do that. Easy. <laughs> yeah, now we're jamming. You've got to get an instrument. I'll listen to it. Loved it, absolutely killed that. Can you not plug it in? Oh, it's a video. Oh, so this is here. You have your own like jam session. Yes, right there. Wow. There he is. You are a jack of all trades and master of everything. However, Alexi, is there anything that you haven't been able to fix? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be bragging by always saying the same thing, but 
No, there wasn't. Sometimes it is such a disappointment when, for example, I'm working on some repairs for hours, and almost at the end there is a person who brings the same thing in perfect condition. And such work is no longer interesting, you know? And you just have to get rid of it. It happens, even though not very often. Oh, that is frustrating. Yeah, but I guess that's why you play music. I think that would chill you out. Well, Lexi, I'm sure you have uh, a lot more things to restore and repair. And thank you so much for letting us uh, come in here and see all these amazing things. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have a little walk around, touch some stuff, and thank you very much. Check you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Everybody come here and see all these things and meet this amazing man. And maybe come for a jam session as well. Right, goodbye. Yeah. Right, well, that was a genuinely lovely, unique experience. Yeah, isn't it? I loved it, I loved it. Yeah, Alexi's a, a fantastic, really nice guy, full of interesting stories. And I believe there have been some like, mixed reviews of this place, but I think they're people that haven't spoken to him. Yeah, I mean, he has so much history about how he made things and so much passion for everything. And I don't know, I've had a really great time. Yeah, you love wearing the costumes. Yes, and they also mean they've got a really great vintage collection You're of clothes. You're going to go back and buy a duster when you get when you I get think home. so. I think mm. it looks great. Yeah, I mean, you looked all right in your hat. I just had a hat on. Um, but yeah, it's uh, being able to like touch and like uh, feel all the things. And like, because I think mean, you go to museums and you're worried about touching everything. He's like, go ahead, grab what you want, get in, get in touch with all the objects. So yeah, it was really, really nice, really great experience. And I would highly recommend coming here. It's really, been really, really, really fun. Yep. Yeah, so. On to the next place we go. Yes, so uh, we'll take this thing, shall we? Yep, let's go for a drive. Jump in. Oh, um, I've got my license, you don't. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind! We'll, walk, we'll, walk. Well, we'll just walk, we'll just walk. One of the most beautiful fountains in the city is located on Cosmonaut Avenue. It is of the Atlas holding the sun and it's surrounded by all the planets of the solar system. Ooh. Let's check it out. <laughs> Let's check it out. Yeah. That's a green ivory car car. It's got kind of Uma Thurman vibe. for its bikes. Rob, why is that? Well, uh, it's one of the first cities in Europe to get these easy-to-use, rentable bikes. In fact, there's 50 kilometers of bike lanes in the city. All you need is the next bike app. You can hop on and pedal away. Hasta luego! Jesus. At the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries, bicycles began to appear en masse in Vinitsa. They were quite expensive, so mainly wealthy residents, that is, entrepreneurs and the local elite, could afford this luxury. It was them who began to shape the cycling culture and develop cycling in the city. Well, now Vinitsa is the first city in Ukraine completely covered with bike lanes. Their length is over 50 kilometers. So we are at AKW, the Ukrainian cowling company, and why, why are we here? Well, I was searching online for a place for us to go, and I saw this beautiful white clay quarry in these turquoise waters. But unfortunately, it is closed to the general public. Yeah, so we've been given special permission to have a look for you, so let's go peep. Have an exclusive look. Call this quarry Ukrainian Pamukkale, by analogy with the incredible travertine terraces in Turkey. It is a quarry, at the bottom of which is a magical sky blue lake surrounded by white sandstone. Truly a miracle of nature. So we are in the middle of Ukraine, 200 kilometers from Kyiv, here in the beautiful Gluchivtsi. This is the place where we, we are walking every day with my colleague Olga and I'm Andre, general manager of the company AKW, Ukrainian Kaolin Company. Behind me is the quarry which we are working on more than 100 years here. And uh, you can see the excavator. This is the open pit, so normal open production, like everybody do with Kaolin. 
And we, of course, should be responsible to the nature. Yeah. And my colleague Olga is responsible for renaturation, which is a very important part of our job. And uh, in principle, this is, uh, to mine, this is not the end of the story. It's only the beginning of the story. And this story of renaturation. Yeah, I think that's very important. To take resources from the earth, you give back to the earth as yeah, well. So, yeah. it's in our plan, and we already started on this part, which you can see there. We uh, recultivate, put back our burden, and making the slopes. So, in the future, it will be, I hope, some kind of park. So, how long will it take? Do you think? Uh, 20 years, I think. 20 years? Yeah. Okay, so, it's a quick project. <laughs> yeah, 20 years. Uh, for, for mining industry, 100 years is nothing. Okay. You, you should walk and walk and walk and only after this you will become a beautiful area where you, where you can uh, take rest and uh, do what you want. So, yeah. Yeah. I have a question about the water. Like, why, why is it so blue? Yeah, because uh, in the bottom uh, we have again quasi kaolin and it's white. And then we have a mirroring of, of uh, light and uh, the, the water makes it blue, so it's nothing special. It <laughs> looks special. <laughs> yeah, it, look, it looks beautiful. I mean, yeah, eventually all this, I suppose, becomes a toilet or a sink in porcelain, but uh, I'll never take porcelain for granted again. I'll be thinking of both of you next time I'm on the toilet. So. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, porcelain is also very important, and uh, the kaolin, it's uh, principle that you can use also for cosmetical purposes. So ma many uh, pharma industries uh, are using kaolin for the filling on in of uh, the medicals of uh, lipsticks. So, yeah, yeah. So this is also kaolin. So kaolin everywhere. You, you simply don't know about it. <laughs> it's fantastic. No, it's pretty. It's brilliant. I think what you're doing here is amazing. And yeah, and thank you for letting us come and see it and take some photos. Yeah. Come again. Oh, we will. Not after 20 years, <laughs> even earlier. <laughs> and uh, help us to do something really beautiful, something inspiring future generation. Oh, well, yeah, I'll send you an email. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. It would be great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Well, we had a great time talking to Andre and Olga, yes. and it was just so interesting to to know about this place and what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, we've learned a lot. I know more about Kowlin than I'd ever known before. Andre loves Kowlin. Can't get nothing quite awesome going on about it. Um, and yeah, it's good to know that although they're taking things away uh, from the earth, they will be putting things back as well by yeah. creating a nice park. And of course, the fact that they're getting young people to organize it and design it as well is, is, is great. I think that's beautiful. Great. Um, so yeah. And there's crystals on the floor, which is great. These like quartz. So that would be nice. A Love little crystal. souvenir, a little natural souvenir to take away from this beautiful Absolutely. place. So let's go away and then come back in about 20 years. We'll see you then. In Vinitsa, there is a restaurant themed after the events of the Ukrainian Revolution from 1917 to 1921. Yes, the period when the Russian Tsar was overthrown and Ukraine seceded from Russia and became their own state. What does a horse wearing a gas mask have to do with it? Well, I'm glad you asked, Heather, because basically during the war, horses were integral to the Ukrainian army. And so during uh, World War I, uh, when there were chemical attacks, uh, the horses were given their own gas masks. Do you think we have to wear a gas mask on eating it here? Probably not, Heather. <laughs> it's been very hard. Come on, let's go eat. During the Ukrainian Revolution, Vinitsa even became the capital of the newly made Ukrainian state for a short time. And the restaurant, Horse in a Gas Mask, itself is located near the house which was then the military camping office of the chief ataman of the troops and the fleet. We have uh, banush, is that Borshma. what it's called? Salo. Borsh, Varelik. Yeah, perfect. We're so good at this now. Right, I'm going to use some yeah. utensils. Pass me a fork. Which one are you most excited to try, Rob? Um, well, I've tried a lot of these before, yeah. so I think the um, Farshmak and the banush are the ones I'm going to yeah. try first. So this is a 
corn-based porridge with, I think, cheese and bacon. So, I mean, that's a win-win, right? Yeah. I, think I, I can get down with that. Right. Okay, it's going to be very heavy. So, it's, I think it's a sheep's brain. I think that's what it is. I don't think, I don't think it is. Is that, was that cheap? It's very heavy. It's, um, the bacon adds a lot, which is good, because I think it was on its own. But it's very cheesy, obviously, because there are lots of cheese in it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, as a vague review, there, there you have it. It's, it's, it's delicious. Yes, and apparently this is something that workers would have after, like, a long day in the mountains. Yes, me, me, many to it, because men work hard. That's, that's what we've why been told. I'm not touching it. It's not because I'm vegetarian or anything. It's just because it's from there. Um, your fish? Let me cleanse my palate with some water and yes. you can try it. Oh, yes, so I've got this Verena K with wild, wild, wild mushrooms and cabbage. So I'm a huge fan of Verena K. I think we know that about You her. are, she is. I've tried all the Verena K all around Ukraine, so here we go. How'd you rate you have to rate it compared to the other Verena K? Mm. Yeah? That's a good one because of the uh, sour cream nice in this place. They do love sour cream. And it's not greasy, it's really nice, with a little bit of pesto on there. So I'm gonna enjoy this platter of my favorite dish. All the food is so delicious, um, but there's just so much of it, right? Good old. Yes. There's a lot of borscht, so we're going to see how this rates towards the other place. But borscht is always flavoursome. I think the one thing I'll take away from Ukraine is borscht is one of my favourite favourite foods now. But like me with Renneke. Mm -hmm. Bon appetit. Enjoy. Thank you very much. It all looks, the presentation is fantastic, the food is lovely. Unfortunately, we don't know what to say about it, but let's say the less we say, the more we're enjoying it. That's how food works.